Hey guys, it's Julie with Julie's Designs. In this video, I'm gonna show you an easy way to transfer words onto wood or any surface you would like. For example, pans, bowls, um, pots, just canvas, anything you can think of, this is an easy way to transfer words onto there. So this is a project that, a piece that I showed y'all on a previous haul video. I had picked these up for a dollar and I'm going to remake them into some timeout chairs. What I, I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown of how I painted it because I already did all that. So this was the top, this is what it looked like when I purchased it, okay? And the idea I had was to turn it into a little kid's bench for them to go sit in time out. And I spray painted the top with chalk paint in white uh, with my spray gun. So it'll stick to this. There was no prep involved. All I did was clean it up. And then I lightly sanded it just to even it out, but you don't want to sand it to distress it because then this will show through. So what I did is I took the antiquing wax and I just antiqued the sides to give it a little bit of a distressed look without sanding it. And then the legs, how cute are these legs? And this bench is super sturdy. So for a dollar, it was a deal. I didn't know what I was gonna do with it at the time, but I knew they were coming home with me. So this is what it looked like before, and I just added the antiquing wax onto the bottoms, and it really just gave it a really cute effect, and it looks great with the top now. Now you would think for a timeout chair, you would want bright colors and stuff, but when I create stuff, I create things that I would put in my own house. I don't want a bright red timeout chair in the middle of my living room. I want something that's gonna match with my decor and, but also be for the kids. You know, they have their room, we can do the bright colors in there, but in my living area, I like everything to be designed the way I like it to look. And I think, that philosophy helps me sell a lot of things because other people think the same way as well. They don't want to break pink timeout chair. They're going to see this and be like, oh my God, that matches perfectly with my decor. That's coming home with me. I might end up keeping one since I got a seven month old. It will not be long before I need one of these timeout chairs. And who knows if I'll ever come across these little benches again. I think this bench design is so much cuter than an actual chair. Now, I have a professional design program. It's an Adobe InDesign where I do all my, let me move this down before I knock it over. I just want to show y'all what it looked like before since I had two of them. And so I have a professional design program where I design all my stuff, but you can also make designs in Microsoft Word or I'm sure there's some great free apps and the uh, programs that you can download to create stuff and my printer only prints eight and a half by 11 which is you know standard paper so what I do is I just print out a bunch as many papers as it takes and then I just tape it together I cut it out and tape it together to get the full design that I want so this is the design that I'm doing on the timeout chair it says timeout to think about the things that you do, but also remember that I love you. So it's super cute. I'm not doing a kid's font. It's the same kind of font that I use on my signs and I'm gonna do it in black. So it's gonna be black, white, and brown. It'll match perfectly with my house or anybody else's house that has the same design concept as me. You want to put your paper exactly centered where you want it to go on your piece. And that's another reason I love this process is because there's no way to really mess it up. You have a chance to get it exactly where you want it. It's not a one shot deal where you put it down and that's it, it's stuck on there. I like to use painter's tape or masking tape to hold my paper down because it will not peel the paint off, but it will keep it in place. So you wanna make sure it's 
it's taped securely that's really the only way you can mess it up is while you're working on this it moves and you're not able to get it back where you want it and then I'm using carbon paper you want to use the the shiny side down that's the part that's going to transfer and I will put a link to these you can get a whole pack of them on Amazon for super cheap I'll have that in the description and they last a long time it's not like you use one one time and that's it it's something you can use over and over again you're gonna want a pencil and what you're gonna do is just trace the words When you're done tracing just double check and make sure that you did get all the words and then you just take it off and what I use to paint the words on you see it has a nice it transfers really nice with the carbon paper and I use paint pens my favorite is the sharpie brand it comes in water-based and oil-based. The difference is the water-based is a matte look. Plate-based is a glossy look. So depending on what projects I am working on, that's what I decide how to use. And then for my smaller words, I use this one from Walmart. It has a fine tip. For some reason, the Sharpie brand doesn't have a good fine tip. So Sharpie, if you're listening, I need all different size tips in both water-based and oil-based that would be amazing they make a big old sharpie pen that i like to use but it does not come in water-based it only comes in oil-based i don't know why they don't have them in each size in both selections but they don't at this time so i'm gonna start off at the bottom and work my way up the reason i do that is because the carbon that transferred will smear if you're rubbing on it so I start at the bottom, I work from left to right, and because I'm right-handed, and then you'll want to let it dry before you touch it again because you will smear, smear your paint and that is hard to fix. So you wanna try not to do that. I'm gonna start with I love you with this paint pen and then the smaller, straighter letters, I'm gonna use with this paint pen, and then I'm gonna go back to my Sharpie paint pen to do the big time out at the top.
finch is done. I'm finished painting it. I will put a clear coat on it. I like the Rust-Oleum clear coat, the spray paint. You can get it at Walmart or Home Depot. And I will put a link to that. And all the paint pens, the Sharpie brand, and the one that you can get at Walmart. One tip I don't think I said before is I like to, when I'm writing it out, you can see I just did one letter at a time. And I try to follow like a clean line and just finish one whole letter. I find you'll get a straighter line if you do that instead of starting and stopping at each little point. So you just wanna kind of follow the line, finish the letter, fill it in, move on to the next one. Just do slow and steady, because if you mess up, it's hard to fix it. You kinda would have to go back with some chalk paint over it and redo it. So just remember, slow, steady hand, work from left to right, and from bottom to top to avoid smearing. Now I'm going to go put the bench together and show you what the final product looks like.